presented by Caltech. There's no way to learn to be a writer except to write and to read. Uh, so I guess the combination of the two. The more reading you do, the better the writer you are. And I can't come up with an equation for how that works exactly. I think you get better at it by doing it. I don't actually need quiet. Sometimes I play music just to, to keep down the background of, of uh, noise. But it's a matter of having a little time. Because if you try to do it and you're constantly being dis interrupted, then you lose the train of thought, then you lose the connections between the various parts of what you're writing. I write best uh, alone in my room uh, with minimal distractions. I like to write in cafes. Uh, the white noise in the background helps me concentrate. I need uninterrupted time to get my ideas down and to think about what I'm saying and to go back and read it and change it if it's not right. So quiet, peace, lack of interruption. There are very few people who can sit down and write a five page paper in two hours and have it be a good paper. Actually, anyone can do that, <laughs> but it isn't necessarily gonna be good. It probably won't be good. So one of the key aspects of writing is time management. You need to give yourself time to what I call stew. You need to just kind of sit with the sense of, I don't know what I'm gonna write, I'm not ready to write yet. The best tip I can give on doing any piece of writing is to start early, because then you just have more time to revise drafts, go see people, to like take a look at your writing. Writing is maybe a little bit more similar to writing code. So if you're writing code, there are a lot of ways to get a computer to do something, and there are a lot of ways that the code can break down and not do what you want it to do. But one thing that you always do if you're writing code is you check your code. You create it, you run it, and you see, is this doing the thing that I want it to do? So for us as writers, we also have to check our code. And the way that we do that is by sharing our writing with other readers. It's a fundamental part of the writing process. Sharing your work with someone else, having them say, this worked, this is not quite working yet, is crucial to improving your work as a writer. Professors are very willing to meet you one-on-one -on -one, um, if you really want to discuss some aspect of your writing that you think could, you could improve on. Many faculty members talk about how they're willing to work with students on their writing. And if they don't have time, we have an amazing writing center. The Hickson Writing Center gave me a lot of feedback that I was able to carry out um, on further assignments and help me grow as a writer. You can always just book an appointment online. It's always just good to get like a second opinion. Peer editing and peer review is incredibly critical uh, for having a clear, effective communication. I wanted to be a Hickson Writing Center tutor because I'm an international student. When I first got to Caltech, I kind of put myself into writing and then I started getting better and then I realized that I want to help people who are in similar situation to me. Everyone can improve as a writer and everyone needs help with their writing. If writing is something that's a challenge for you, as it's a challenge for most people, that doesn't mean that you should shy away from it. You should know that that's normal, that even the best writers struggle to produce great prose, and that that's just part of how it works. You know, it will be a struggle in the beginning, but I've noticed that it has paid off in the end. It will help you become a better scientist or engineer. I feel uh, I've developed significantly as a writer during my time here. Uh, mostly due to the freedom that I'm afforded as a writer. Uh, I'm able to develop really different ideas. Uh, I'm now uh, developing my own style. There's no single correct way to say something in writing or to say something in oral presentation. There's a style, there's a certain flair, there's a flavor, and different writers will say the same idea differently and some of those styles will communicate more effectively than others. 
And so you need to find your voice, your style, your way of writing that says what you want to say and says it your way. And I think that can raise any sort of writing above the ordinary to the extraordinary. Something that happens to us in the Writing Center is we'll see seniors come in as they prepare to go on to the next phase of their work, and they'll say, the Writing Center is so helpful, I wish I'd come here earlier. And so I'd encourage you as a freshman to come, the first time you're doing a writing assignment, bring a paper in to us and see what it's about, see what we can do for you to support you, so that you know that we're here for you throughout your four years, and you can come back and see us anytime that you need to. One thing that's always wonderful to see is the freshman who didn't have a sense of her own voice at the age of 17 or 18, and then you see that student again at 20 or 21, and something wonderful has happened, and they've acquired confidence, and their writing reflects that. I worked hard on writing in high school, and I worked hard on writing in college, and I worked hard on writing in graduate school, and I've continued to work on my writing as well as my oral presentation through my professional career as a professor and as a teacher and as a working scientist. It's a gradual process. It's never done. Writing is a life's work. It's not a single class that you take and you say, okay, I'm done, now I can write.